Welcome to the Radiant Life Podcast. I am your host, Tatiana Kuto, and I am a master mindset coach, and I'm obsessed with empowering you to live and create your best life possible. If you're looking to uplevel your mindset, life, happiness, and success, then you are in the right place. My goal with this podcast is to help you see the potential within yourself, to be able to break the limiting beliefs and habits that are holding you back, and to help you feel inspired to get clear with who you are in order to create the life you desire. Thank you so much for listening. Now let's get into today's episode. Do you want to make 2022 your best year yet? Are you interested in learning how to get clear and aligned with your goals and learn how to manifest them into your reality easily? If so, I invite you to join my free five-day workshop, Radiate Into the New Year, where I will teach you my signature method on how to release the stuff that is holding you back in the past and how to create goals effectively so that you can reach them and manifest them into your life by becoming an energetic match to them. The workshop starts January 9th and it sounds like your vibe and you're ready to take 2022 into your control and make it your best year yet. Join us. It's going to be so epic and I'm so excited to help you reach all of your heart's desires. You can sign up now by using the link in my bio and I hope to see you there. Hi loves, welcome to the Radiant Life Podcast. It's the new year, right? New year, new you, new goals, right? So how are you showing up differently this year than you did a week or two ago back in 2021? Ask yourself that, right? Today I want to share with you five things you need to stop doing when you first wake up and what you can be doing instead because these five things may be hindering you from having the best energy, from having a good, happy, successful day, from reaching your highest potential. Come on, let's be real. A lot of us do some things in the morning that don't serve us. So here are five things I really want you guys to stop doing. All five of these I do not do anymore. I have completely shifted my mornings and I feel amazing. I've shared this with my clients and I tell you word for word, my clients feel so much better when they stop doing these things they're like Tati oh my god I feel like I have so much more energy I feel like I can wake up earlier I have so much I can do my my husband noticed I'm nicer and happier with my children like my co-workers are like wow you did you wake up on the good right side of the bed today right like because your mornings set the tone for your day and so many of us fall into bad habits just because and it is what it is. But today, I'm, I'm here to tell you five things that you stop doing, and I hope you implement them so you can radically shift how you start your days. Some of these you may hurt. Some of these you may have like tried, just, but just listen throughout it out and see it come full circle of how all five of these play a huge role into you starting your day on the right note, showing up as your best self, and starting your, your days with wins, right? So let's get into it. First thing is first, (laughs) stop hitting snooze. Just stop it. Like how many of you guys press snooze eight times? Like you literally put an alarm. Maybe you put it at six because you're like, I need to press snooze like three or four times and then I'll wake up. Or maybe you're like, huh, I don't press snooze. I just put like five alarms. If you're like my sister, you might be doing that. Either way, stop pressing snooze. Stop setting multiple alarms. When you're pressing snooze, you're automatically starting your day off with a loss. You're confusing yourself. You're confusing your mind, your subconscious mind, because you're telling yourself, okay, the alarm is up. It's time to wake up. Your conscious mind is awake, but then subconsciously you're so half asleep and you're, you're literally selling yourself as to why you should sleep in more. You're convincing yourself. And I want you to take a second. If you can convince yourself to sleep five more minutes, 10 more minutes, 30 more minutes, What else are you subconsciously unaware about that you're telling yourself to do? Are you talking yourself or selling yourself out of working out, doing the tasks that has been on your to-do list for the last few weeks? Like, think about it. The way you first wake up, you start your day, changes everything. Even if it's multiple alarms. So a few things that you can do, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mel Robbins' five-second rule. Her alarm goes off and she just, you know, like blast off. This is such a great tool for your subconscious mind. Just go five, four, three, two, one, get up, go. Does wonders. Maybe you've tried that. So biggest tip of advice, stop putting your phone next to your bed. Get an alarm clock. I hope everybody listening like knows what an alarm clock is because like, I don't know. My cousin really doesn't even understand that because they got their phones, right? Like the younger generations. But either way, 
put it away, put it in your bathroom, put it on the opposite side of the room. So it's so prevalent that you actually have to get up. Two other tips are set an alarm tone that like actually makes you want to wake up. I don't know about you, but when I hear like, wow, that was a really bad alarm interpretation, but you get what I'm saying. Like who the hell wants to wake up like that? Like I wake up frantically. So instead I put like a good song on or a soothing song on or as like my alarm, right? And the last tip is right when your alarm goes off, this is a game changer. My clients are like, whoa, drink water. It wakes your brain up. It wakes up your digestive system and then it's good. So my morning routine and and lights, that's my other tip. Put on lights on an automatic timer. If you're sitting here listening like, okay, Tati, but I have to wake up at like 6 a.m. and it's pitch black out and it's cold. I hate it. I feel you. I feel you. I, when I was living in Boston, freezing fucking cold, I had to wake up at 4 a.m. That sucks. So you know what I did? I put Christmas lights or you could put a lamp in your room on a timer. So when you're like a minute before your alarm goes off or maybe a few minutes, have the lights go on. This is going to help your body wake up naturally. So when your alarm goes off, you already have a like put on like a dim light unless you really need a bright light, a light already on. It already helps your body think it's the sun and wake up drink the water, have a good ringtone. This, these are all ways to help you get out of pressing snooze or having multiple alarms on top of putting your phone or alarm clock on the other side of the room. So for me, my morning routine looks like this. My alarm goes off. I shut the alarm off. I chug water. I go on my phone and I have this Spotify playlist on and I just listen to it and I just like will sit in bed and I wake up and I tell myself like a few things like it's going to be a great day. I have the lights on, like my Christmas lights over my bed. And then I wake up and I feel fucking great. And that's a win for the day. Started my day off without pressing snooze or multiple alarms. Okay. First things first, stop hitting snooze. Stop putting multiple alarms. You're confusing your body. Because let's just be real. When you press snooze or multiple alarm and you fall back asleep, do you actually feel satisfied and more fulfilled when you wake up? Hell no. You feel more tired. You're like groggy. So don't do that. It's not helping your body. Okay. Number two. Stop looking at your phone immediately. How many of you roll over and go on Instagram, go on Snapchat, check your text messages, check your emails? Oh my God, don't even get me started if you're starting with work first fucking thing in the morning. Get off your phone. Like I said earlier, yes, I turn my phone on and I put a Spotify music. I have text messages. I I don't have many notifications. I don't have any notifications on any of my social medias, which that should be like, a no-brainer tip for you. But I, I don't even look at the text messages. I don't look at anything. I just open, scroll, just got into a Spotify, playlist is up, play it. So that's a different story. Stop looking at your phone immediately. Just stop because that's literally triggering you to be like, oh my God, I have to respond to all these people. I have to have this email. This is like to-do list. I have to do all these things. And what is that doing? That's putting your focus on everything else but you everybody else, all the things you have to do, work, people, friends, your day needs to be starting off with you. You and only you. Even if you're a parent, you. Wake up five, 10 minutes earlier. Don't go on your phone and check your messages and check your emails. It can fucking wait. Sorry, I'm getting like passionate about this one because it's so ridiculous. We... We're just so addicted and attached to our phones. And that's the first thing we do when we start our day. What is that going to do for the rest of your day? Or maybe you see a mean comment or you get jealous of someone's post. You're automatically shifting your energetic state and setting your tone for the day on that. So again, get an alarm clock. Put it on the other side of the room. So it doesn't help you press snooze. But so then you're also not tempted to be on your phone. Because if you are tempted to be on your phone, even if you're putting a Spotify playlist on, don't do it. Go old school. Put get a radio, get an alarm clock, put the radio on, put some music on, set the tone for your day, make it feel good. I highly recommend you try not to look at your phone until after your morning routine, at least 30 minutes from waking up. Put yourself first. Got it? Okay, cool. Third thing is stop waking up at different times. This one, you might be like a little controversial here. But listen to me, your body craves rhythm and routines and your body's natural state and what it really craves to be in is to be in a, in your circadian rhythm, in your circadian cycle. And if you want more information on that, you can look it up on Google, but it thrives off routines. Like, you know, 
in the weekend when you go to bed and you don't have an alarm on and then you wake up naturally at like 6 or 7 a.m. and you're like, oh my God, your body's your body knows when to wake up. Your body's like, wake up, like I feel good. Because what happens on the weekends? I don't know about you, but if I fall back asleep on the weekends, I just don't feel my best. I kind of like feel shaky and groggy again. It's like pressing snooze and your body doesn't do that. And so ideally, waking up at the same time every single day of the week, obviously, is the most ideal thing. But maybe weekends, you, you sleep in a little bit. But going from 6 a.m. to like 10 a.m., like that's a, that's a four-hour difference. Like that's a lot. And then Monday comes around and your body's more tired and more confused because Monday morning you're like, wait, the hell? You just slept in until 10 a.m. the last two days. I'm just so confused, right? It, it really does crave these cycles and these rhythms and these routines. So just trying to find something that works for you. And maybe the weekends, it's more of just like you wake up naturally, but that first time you wake up, you actually wake up. And maybe it is an hour or two later different, but you're not sleeping in extremely late. Listen to your body. It knows. It needs this. I promise you'll feel so much good. You'll feel so much more energized and accomplished when you can wake up every single day. Like, it, it's a game changer. I'm going to tell you that because I used to do that. I used to be at like kind of extremes and it just helps. You feel good. You know what? The older you get, I don't know how old you are when you're listening to this, but the older you get, the less you sleep in on the weekends. At least that's what's happened to me. That's what my parents say, what everyone says. So just get yourself in a routine. Okay. Fourth thing to stop doing when you first wake up. Ooh, mama's going to be happy. I said this one. Make your bed. Make your bed, people. Come on. And if you're one of those people that are like, why I'm just going to go back to sleep in it in like 12 hours, I don't care. You still got 12 hours. Make your damn bed. (laughs) It literally takes one minute. It takes a minute. Make your bed. You want to know why? This is going to make you, you're going to feel productive. You're going to feel like, yes, I I woke up, check mark, didn't press news. Check mark, didn't look at my phone. Check mark, I made my bed, right? You're starting yourself off in a successful win. You're starting yourself daily. And at the end of the day, your external reality where you're living in, your environment is a reflection of your internal. So if you struggle with overwhelm, with anxiety, with chaos, look at your external environment. Is your bed made? Do you have clothes everywhere? Do you have dishes in the sink? Because it makes a huge deal. It makes a huge difference. So make your bed. You're starting off with the win. You're feeling good. And it's like, it just feels good to go into your room and be like, wow, my bed is made. Like, I love it. I have so much satisfaction. I never, ever leave my bed unmade. Honestly, you can ask my mom. I don't ever think I was like the person to do that. It just like doesn't feel good. Like it just makes your, honestly, it makes your room look messy. It feels gross to me, to me. And I don't know, but do it because it's going to make you feel like you're starting off on a win. And when you can start off on these little wins and all these little productive things, it's a snowball effect. And imagine how that's going to flow into the rest of your day. Okay. And the fifth and final thing I recommend you stop doing when you first wake up in the morning. (laughs) Stop drinking coffee right away. You just woke up. Let yourself slowly wake up. Allow your body to naturally be energized. Jump up and down. Get one of those mini trampolines. Jump up and around. Do stretches. Sing. Dance. Do something. Your body, like you just slept for eight hours. Give your body a break. And drink water. Because think about it. How many hours did you just sleep? What, seven to ten hours? I don't know how, how much you sleep. Think about how much how dehydrated you are. Studies say that you lose about like a liter of water when you're sleeping. The best thing you can do is hydrate yourself. You can do, there's like this mineral drink that my friends do all the time. It's warm water with lemon and salt, sea salt. Ooh, so good. It helps you really, um, it helps you hydrate yourself. Because like, this is a little sciencey here, but like, your cortisol levels, which is like your stress hormones, is the highest when you wake up. Probably because like your body like, you know, it's like, oh my God, I just woke up. This alarm. Ma! Right? Like your stress levels are high. And so when you add in caffeine or coffee, it's just raising those and spiking those in your poor adrenals. So get hydrated. Drink water. Again, like I said earlier, right when your alarm clock goes on, turn over. I always have a big glass of water sitting next to my bed and I hug it. 
This is going to help you wake up. This is going to help you feel more clear-headed and not foggy. It's going to wake up your brain, your digestive system. It's going to help you with all of these, just really waking up and feeling energized. And then I would recommend drinking another glass and then have coffee. Hydrate your body because like being dehydrated is not fun. Like, I don't know about you, like hydrate your body. Your body needs it. We're, I think we're like 70 to 80% made of water. So if you're not hydrated, I, I always picture us as like shriveled up little raisins. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just laughing to myself right now what I'm saying, but yeah. So hydrate yourself. Don't drink coffee right away. Okay. At the end of the day, these five things, if you wake up on your first alarm, if you give yourself at least 30 minutes without phone or screen time, if you put yourself in or give yourself a wake up routine where you're waking up around the same time every single day, you make your bed and you hydrate yourself, boy, oh boy, you are going to feel fucking amazing. I promise you because this is how I do my mornings. I promise you that because my clients did this. I just had a call with a client, a new client the other day. And all we did, all we did was have her wake up 15 minutes earlier and drink water and no phone. She was already making her bed, you know, and she's like, girl, I feel so much more energy throughout my day. I feel so much more alert. I feel so much happier. She's like, I literally can't believe this. And she's at the point. She's like, so weirdly enough, I kind of want to wake up earlier so I can do more. I want to work out. I want to feel good. I want to start my day more about me. Because at the end of the day, excuse me, water burp, your morning set the tone for your day. You need to put yourself first. If you know me and what I preach, you come first. You come first. You need to fill up your cup first. So you're showing up to your children, to your husband, to your employer, to the day with an overflowing, filled up cup versus drained half empty. Because if you're drained and half empty, focusing on everything you have to do for everybody else but you, you're not showing up as your best self. You're going to hit drawn out. I'm t- I promise you that. So start the morning with you. It sets the tone for the day. If you do all opposite of these five things, you stop doing these five things and do the tips I recommended, think about this. You will wake up every morning with five wins already. Five check marks. Five, you will feel so successful, so productive. And what I said earlier, it's a snowball effect and it will roll and roll and you will continue to have this feel good, winning, productive momentum throughout your day. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It sets your tone. So if you're wanting to make this new year your best year, put yourself first in the morning. Develop healthy, successful habits and do it by starting off your day on the right note. If that means you got to do 10 minutes earlier, do it. I always say everybody should have some type of morning ritual routine. Put yourself first. You're filling up your cup. That might look like a workout. That might look like reading, journaling, breath work, meditation, stretching. I don't care. Well, you know, I care a little bit. Like don't like watch TV, but do something for you. Fill up your cup. You're going to feel so good. You're going to show up so much better in every area of your life. That's why like the top successful people tell you your mornings matter. And I'm not telling you you have to wake up at 5 a.m. every day. I'm not telling you that. But I'm telling you, when you do wake up, set yourself up for success. You're going to feel so good, so proud. And it's going to help you make this the best year yet. You feel me? (laughs) Okay, cool. I hope this was a great reminder as what to not do and then do instead in your mornings. I hope this makes you feel motivated and empowered and inspired to start the day on the right note, putting yourself first because it's going to completely radically change your life. Let me know what you think about this. Take a screenshot, share it on Instagram at Tatiana underscore Takuto. Tell me like the number one, like a, the tip that resonated the most. Was it making your bed? Was it putting your alarm clock on the other side of the room? Putting a light on a timer? Drinking water? Like, let me know. I want to hear. What's something you want to work on? I'll help hold you accountable. I'll check in with you if you want. If you want. I won't make, I won't do it, but share. I'd love to share this. Send it. Anybody else, all those sleeper, sleepy heads who don't make their beds or put on 10 alarms or press snooze and yeah I'm unfortunately calling you out because you're gonna feel so much better when you do this send it to them be like okay start your day on it right now (laughs) but yeah thank you guys so much for listening thank you for sharing please don't forget to leave an apple itunes review I love hearing your feedback it helps me reach more people with this podcast it lets me learn more of what it is you like to hear 
And I just appreciate you guys listening and your support. And I'm excited to make 2022 an amazing year for all of us. Okay, let's start with starting our days on the right note. Thank you guys so, so much for listening. I love you all. I hope you have an amazing, radiant day. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with me and write an Apple iTunes review so I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't following me already, you can find me on Instagram at Tatiana underscore Kuto. I appreciate you so much and cannot wait to see you in the next episode. In the meantime, continue to shine bright and embrace your radiance.